right, you're rolling. Certainly do my best. Okay, Mel, welcome to Texas. Thank you. I hope you're enjoying your brief visit here. I sure am. It's brief, <laughs> but <laughs> yes. I am. A real flying visit, isn't it? Well, I'm on a long tour for promoting my movie Blue in the Face. Yes. And I have um, just a certain amount of time to get a lot done before it opens October 20th around the country. Now, tell us the role that you play in Blue in the Face. The role I play is Harvey Keitel's. Um, Harvey Keitel's. Wait, 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 wait. Do that one again? Okay. Just start the role that I The role that I play is Harvey Keitel's Cuban Spitfire girlfriend. I can't even say the word Spitfire girlfriend, and it started off in the movie Smoke, where I played this seven-minute scene with him and William Hurt, where we're kind of drinking and a little out of control at this bar. And uh, when they called me out to do Blue in the Face, they said that Wayne Wang and Paul Auster, my agency, they, my agency ICM, said that they decided to do this three-day improvisational, uh, basically unscripted is improvisational, little feature film, you know, that they were going to do as an experiment. So I said, fine, if I get to play Harvey's girlfriend again, I'll do it. So they said yes, they loved my role, so they blew it up much bigger. And when those three days were done, which was about a month after Smoke had been, you know, wrapped, wrapped meaning finished, <laughs> I use these, uh, these little terms, and, uh, there was a party, and uh, Bob and Harvey Weinstein, who are the co-founders and owners of Miramax, they had this little rap party, and at the party, I sang the song Fever as a gift to Harvey Keitel, you know, and with a Cuban accent. Okay, so everybody had a really good time, and I sang the song. Months later, I'm vacationing in South Africa, and I get a call, like, 21 days I'm supposed to be there. I'm only there three days, 17-hour plane flight. <laughs> And I get a call from my agency, and they said, well, Mel, they want to do three more days now. And uh, the good news is that they wanted you to sing Fever in the movie like you did at that rap party. But the bad news is that you're going to have to leave tomorrow. So I was there only three days in South Africa, you know, sunning myself, you know, riding on motorcycles and having the greatest time. And the next thing I know, I was on a plane back, and on my birthday, I was on the set finishing up the movie, which I thought already was finished. And that's, wh uh, that's wh how those six days occurred. And my, my role is basically Violet Sanchez, uh, not basically, it's not a basic character, <laughs> no, not at all, Mel. <laughs> the role is actually my mother. My mother is a Cuban woman who's just like that. <laughs> so I kind of like walked into it and just did her. You know, just like, the, especially that one line, because it's improvisational, I was able to do anything I wanted. Uh, that one line where I'm standing outside of the, have you seen the film? Yes. Okay, then, all right. The part where I'm standing outside at the beginning of the movie and Mira Sorvino, the little boy, steals her bag. And, and I'm trying to, you know, really just make things right because I'm nervous and, and, and it's really upsetting. And then I, I, he starts out of nowhere, looks at me and says, you know, like, will you just shut up? And I say to him, don't talk to me like that, Augie. Well, that's my mother. <laughs> that, that is exactly what my mother would do. <laughs> Don't talk to me like that. So that's what that character is. Does your mother know that she is the inspiration? Oh, please. I tell her she's very touched by it. She acts like she's not, but she is. She's like, okay, I, you do a movie. You a movie star now. And okay, okay. You know, she doesn't care. She's just like so uh, not important to her, you know? She's just happy that I'm happy doing what I love to do. She's seen me work all these years, you know. When you did Smoke, did you have a complete script or was oh, that yeah. all? Yeah, yes. Smoke was a, a script. Oh, it was very scripted. It was sent to me. I read it. I went and auditioned and I got cast. Blue in the Face was not. That was potluck. The movie's doing very well internally before it's been put out to the public. I, I've been getting people with very, very positive and always with a smile on their face, you know, saying, I didn't want the movie to end. You know, I was really enjoying it. I, it just ended, you know, and I wanted more. It's amazing the people doing cameos in it, like Michael J. Fox. Well, there's Michael J. Fox, there's Roseanne, there's Lily Tomlin, there's uh, Madonna, there's uh, Lil, um, uh, Giancarlo Esposito, Victor Argo, Jim Jarmusch, Lou Reed. Oh, I love Lou Reed in this picture. He cracks me up. He's so funny. And there's Harvey Keitel, Mira Sorvino, um, RuPaul, uh, 
oh God, Jared Harris, who is Richard Harris's son, plays Jimmy, the slow boy. Uh, oh, there's, 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 I named, just named nine people. So yeah, there's a lot of people who did this for the art of it. Definitely not the money, you know? We did it because we wanted to do something really unusual. Plus, the fact is that, you know, Harvey Weinstein, whatever he touches turns to gold, I gotta tell you. That man's got an eye of gold. He's of the old school of Hollywood, you know, he sees somebody who's got some talent and he narrows in on it and they become a star within six months to a year. He did it with Harvey Keitel, he did it with Quentin Tarantino, he did it with Uma Thurman, you know, and uh, he's placed his hands on me and boy, amazing things have been happening. <laughs> he's like a guardian angel. <laughs> I kid you not. Did Lily Tomlin always elect to play that street person, the street man? I heard that she knew about this improvisational film that the Weinsteins were doing at Miramax, and she called in and said, yeah, I'll do it. Something like that. I can't really quote the situation because I don't know, but I had heard through the grapevine that many of the actors had been calling, and I mean, they had a lot more people from Hollywood saying, oh, I'd love to be a part of this. It sounds so cool. You know, I, I'm always at these big budgeted movies that are so complicated and this is so simple and people wanted to be a part of this. You know, this was not difficult to gather the, around the people at all. So now, what are the plans for the future? Well, I have a lot of plans for the future, actually. Um, what is happening to me is I, I finished two more movies after Blue in the Face was done last October. I did a movie called Curdled with Billy Baldwin. I play the third lead in it, and I play with a big scar on my face, and kind of distorts me. It's like a Betty Davis or Anne Bancroft role. It's really a great role, and I'm so proud of it. And it's in a film that Miramax uh, did. Quentin Tarantino executive produced it. Reb Braddock directed it. And it stars Angela Jones, who is also, on <laughs> She's, I think, the next Vivian Lee of our time. She's so incredible. And all of our scenes I do with, are together with her because she gets paired up with me as a team. And there's something wrong with her, and I notice it, and nobody else sees it. You know, and Barry Corbin, who's from Dallas, yeah. plays my boss in the movie. Um, and then I did that for seven weeks in Miami. That'll be released somewhere about mid to late 96. And then I did another Miramax movie called wishful thinking and that's with just three women and three men and it's Drew Barrymore, Jennifer Beals and myself and I play her Cuban psychic on the Lower East Side. It's a really great role. All my scenes are with Drew. So we had a lot of really good, I was very lucky to work with two women this year who I had great chemistry with and that was Angela and, and Drew, you know, it really was. And in my near future plans, um, I'm going to be working with an actor who's phenomenal named Tom Berenger and we're going to be doing uh, an epic which is an old Sam Peckinpah film uh, script, and it's going to be shot in Mexico for three months. I'm the only woman in it, and it's called So Far From God, and it's really like another Dr. Shivago. It, it's going to be brilliant. I cried through the whole script, gave it to my agent who hates everything, and she said, oh, Belle, it was just incredible. So that's my plan in the ne very near 96, you know, in the new year. Who knows what's going to happen between there and now and then anyway, <laughs> but that's my near plan. Now, I know we'll be meeting again with all this work you're doing. I know it's, it, we are destined so. to meet and talk Well, I'm again. a Miami girl, by the way. And, all right. Yeah, and all I'm, right. you know, I, I just started traveling, and this was like I'm on the way through, and it's really <laughs> nice to meet you. I love, I love Texas. It's cool. Thanks, Mel, very much. You're very welcome. <laughs> Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just get, can get a, some reverse two shots. That'll take care of us. Anyway, what uh, channel is this? Now? Uh, the NBC channel. This is the NBC of yeah. Dallas. For Dallas and Fort Worth and all of North Texas. Okay, great. Yeah. And I just got to get my seven hours, eight hours sleep. Okay, now uh, turn your body a little. Is that good, Bob? Yeah, I want, yeah. Look at Bobby and tell me about the motorcycles. You said you were on motorcycles. <laughs> yes. Well, my ex-husband <laughs> builds his own boat. Motorcycles are called Bison motorcycles. And uh, I see your lips moving. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Keep your head. This all way. right. And he uh, took me to South Africa because he buys and sells uh, Harley Davidsons to South Africa for the last three years. So we went there basically to, uh, you know, talk to his partners, and that was my birthday present from him in October. We just got divorced like six months ago, but we're friends. We're good friends. <laughs> That's good. Yeah.
Yeah, so there, there's your motorcycle story. <laughs> I've been riding, I've been married 13 years to him, and of those 13 years, we spent about nine of them on a motorcycle. I never rode myself. I was on the back of his always. Have you ever ridden yourself? No. Are you fearful of no. around motorcycles? No. You if I was, I wouldn't. getting hurt? No. Oh. Well, that's, a, that's good. I wish you had to have a talk with my wife and tell her why you're not. No, but I don't really have a desire to learn how to ride one myself. Yeah. I'm more, I like being on the back of one, but you see, now since I've been divorced, I won't just uh, hop on anybody's motorcycle. I trusted him. He didn't drink, mm -hmm. didn't do drugs, you know. Did and you ever have a serious accident or an accident? Yes, one. One bad one about five years ago. Somebody pulled out in front of him? Or Two cabs pulled out in New York City in front of him and he had to go through them and he had to pull his legs up up on top of the Ooh. thing and it fell over, bike flipped over and he completely